In this video, we're going to take a look at the least squares regression line, or the line of best fit. So essentially, the least squares regression line, or LSRL, is the line for which the distance between each data point and a predicted data point is the smallest. So before we look at any of those equations, which look a little bit intimidating, I just want to talk about a couple of things with you that will hopefully help that make more sense we can draw a line of best fit anywhere. So here I've drawn a line of best fit, and this line is y bar, I'm sorry, y hat. That's the equation. So any output, any y value on that is considered y hat. What we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize the residual. And a residual is y minus y hat. So let me tell you about a residual, and then we'll talk about how we can make them smaller. So with my very, very bad uh, prediction line of y hat, I can see, uh, let's take a look, say, at this value, which would correspond to this value. So this value would be a y value for x is 9. Okay, so this is at x is 9. It looks like y is actually 4, but according to my line, y hat is 7. So the residual for that individual point where x is 9 is y, which is 4, minus y hat, which is 7. So I have a residual of 3. What we're looking for in a least squared regression line is to minimize those residuals. So it's pretty clear that if I instead moved this line, say here, which doesn't hit all of the points because they're not in a completely straight line, but it looks like now y hat might be something like 4.1. And therefore, oops, this one should have been a negative three. I apologize, I wasn't paying attention. So now if y hat is 4.1, then I have 4 minus 4.1, which is negative 0.1 instead of negative 3. Well, that's a heck of a lot closer than it was before. So that's why we don't make regression lines ourselves, because the computer can actually do all of those calculations and determine where the line should go so that it is it minimizes all of these residuals. Now, the reason it's called a least squares regression line is because of the calculation that's involved. So what they would do is they would take that residual for every single x value and we would square them and then we would add them all together and then we would divide by the number that we have. And that would be um, the least squares. Now, the regression line has two parts, just like any other linear equation. So hopefully you remember from algebra, y equals mx plus b. And when we had y equals mx plus b, b was the intercept, the y-intercept, and m was the slope. Well, guess what? That's exactly what we have here. Now, typically in statistics, we just write it in the opposite order. So it would be like b plus mx, same idea though, this is still the y-intercept, and this is, oops, not the x, the m is still the slope, which is b1. So b1 is the slope, the y-intercept is um, b sub zero. And those um, formulas look a little bit complicated, but the good news is Excel can actually just do all of that for us. So I'm going to show you how to do this in Excel because doing it by hand is sort of maddening. So we're going to look at this question together. And the first part of the question is something that we've already learned. We're going to determine, is there a significant linear relationship at the um, 0 0.05 level of significance between class size and average test score? So we have a local school board. They want to evaluate the relationship between class size and performance on the state achievement test. It decides to collect data from various schools in the district and the data from a sample of eight classes are shown on the table. Each pair of data represents the class size and corresponding average score on the achievement test. So first we're going to take a look at, is it a significant linear relationship, which means we're going to graph it 
and take a look at whether or not it looks linear, and then we're going to perform our hypothesis test that we're used to. And then if it is significant, we're going to find the least squares regression line for the data, and I'm going to help you know how to do that. So let's take a look at this question now. And again, this data should look familiar to us. We've already used it in section 12.1 when we were learning about R and R squared and how to determine if something is statistically significant. Now what we want to do is, if it's significant, go ahead and find the least squares regression line for the data. So there's a couple of things that we can do. First of all, I want you to notice I copied over everything from section 12.1. So I can do part A without breaking a sweat. The only thing I had to do was enter the X values in A, the Y values in B, and my alpha level. And Excel literally did everything else for me, as we know. So now what I wanna do is find the equation. So again, one way that I can do this is go to insert and scatter plot. And notice I have my scatter plot and it's obviously got a negative slope, which I can see again at the R value as well. And I don't need to make it all fancy. I don't care if I have data labels and all of that, but what I do want to add is my trend line and I want more options. So I want it to be linear. And I also can say display equation and R squared value on the chart. And notice what happened is I have the actual equation on my chart and I didn't have to do anything. Now, that's good, but it's also bad. And here's why it's good. It's good because I had to make a scatter plot anyway in order to make sure that it looked like a linear relationship in order for me to move forward. So it doesn't take much to click an extra box that says, hey, give me the equation as well. The reason that it's not so good is I can't use that equation to predict anything because these values are not in cells in Excel. So really all I need to do is find a way to calculate the negative 1.0434, which is the slope in Excel. And I also need to find a way to find the intercept in Excel. Turns out it's super easy to do. For the intercept, I'm going to use the function intercept. Notice I just need known y's, comma, known x's, and if you'll notice, I get 103.0851 or 103.09, which is the same as the intercept over here. The slope is slope. I know, the mind reels. Known y's, comma, known x's. Notice I get the exact same value. So again, the reason I would take the time to go ahead and find these is because now I can actually set up an equation using those two values that I have calculated. This is a question I would like for you to try on your own. And the data set that I've given you gives you the amount of forest burned in hectares. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Um, in thousands in the Western US and the number of days in which there was significant rainfall, which they call wetting rain days. And so it's eight years of data and the first thing we're to do is to show that it's appropriate to use a linear regression model. And then we need to find the model um, that we could use to predict the amount of forest burned based on the number of wetting rain days. So I would like for you to try that on your own. And when you're ready, press, press play to see how you did. So again, doing this in Excel, the only thing I needed to do was to put my hectares in A, my days, my wedding days in B, everything, oh, and alpha level of 0 0.05, and everything else has calculated for me. So even though this is a very complicated chapter, once you understand the concept and you get your Excel spreadsheet set up, hopefully it should go pretty fast for you. So again, everything has been calculated. This is statistically significant using a um, hypothesis test. 
and then again I can find the intercept and the slope and I can also go to insert and scatter plot to again see that this does in fact looks like a negative linear relationship. Up next, we want to take a look at how we can predict values using the least squared regression line and how we can interpret both the slope and the intercept.